welcome to study with master notes again so thank you viewers for viewing and like share liking sharing and my channel so we will start today is a unit 13 of block 3 that is themes and characterization in huckleberry finn okay so keep watching the video till end and you will get all the notification about huckleberry finn and its uh, themes and characterization okay in exam point of view it is very important you will get your long questions so we will start that is unit 3 themes and characterization in huckleberry finn so again i am requesting you to uh, like share and subscribe this study with master notes okay so thank you so we will start unit 13 the themes and characterization in huckleberry finn okay it is the structure here is the objectives introduction themes twins art of characterization the characterization of huck huck in tom sawyer sources in mark twain's life huck huck's moral development the characterization of jim source in mark twain's life jim the ending of huckleberry finn let us sum up glossary assignment and for the reading so here it is the objectives every unit has its own objective already i have uh, i am telling in all my videos so if we know what is the objectives of this unit then we will study half of the main part of the story okay here it is the objectives as as well as providing you with some preliminary information about huckleberry finn the unit offers a perspective on the themes and the characters in it apart from the principal theme of freedom and slavery it discusses other themes and motives and then goes on to focus on huck and his moral development the characterization of jim will consider the ways in which mark twain departs from the stereotype of a negro appearing in fiction and on stage okay so here it is a negro appearing fiction and on stage is the main key point you okay so mark twain departs from the stereotype of a negro appearing in fiction and on stage okay here it is the introduction any literary work must be seen both in relation to the life experiences and values of its author and to the socio cultural context of the time and place in which it remains firmly rooted this is particularly important in the case of huckleberry finn which deals with the sensitive issue of slavery okay so we will go By the time he came to write Huckleberry Finn Mark Twain had left Hannibal and had settled in Elmira and had outgrown his slave holding heritage his friend W D Howells called him the most uh, desouthernized southerner ha- however his presentation of slavery particularly the way in which Jim is freed in the novel has been faulted the background information provided earlier about the author and the age should help you to read the text again and make your own judgment about the book's treatment of slavery and some other issues raised in the book then there is a the themes the huckleberry finn has been a happy hunting uh, ground for critics wanting to classify its genre and identify its themes or themes is it a boys book or book of travel and adventures it has long been read as a classic for boys or is it a comic book or a book that contains adult social criticism and satire or is it a book boys book in the sense of being book about growing up or related and a more important question is what is the book about a since very important novel is about a number of things the key question is what is huckleberry finn particularly about before you read further i want you to note down what you consider to be the important themes or motives in the novel so what is the important motives of the novel you could write the theme or motive singly or in pairs of opposite ideas my own list would read something like this growing up death and rebirth romantic imagination versus reality civilization versus freedom individual versus society river versus town which of this according to you is the principal theme very obviously the theme of freedom and slavery is the central preoccupation of the book so okay so here we are it is the main main key point is the freedom the theme of freedom and slavery okay the theme of freedom and slavery is the central preoccupation of the book it is the spine of the novel and that gives it strength through there are other thematic strands intertwined with it 
so freedom in the novel is multi dimensional okay so it of course means physical freedom for both hak and chim hak from the suffocating civilizing atmosphere at the widow douglas and from his brutal drunken father and zim from chattel slavery but it also means freedom from inherited prejudices which is what hak achieves in relation to zim at the end for hak freedom also means freedom from the constraints of civilized society already an outcast hak doesn't have the kind of attachments that jim has or that tom has he wants to be able to plow or lonely furrow by lightning out for the territory in other words freedom for hak is centrifugal running away from the security of home to the wilderness of the outside world but for jim freedom means freedom to be reunited with his wife and children okay so his concept of freedom is centripetal in more practical terms jim is free towards the end having been freed by his owner miss watson in her will but tom's elaborate plan to free him in style ironically prolongs his slavery and the episode can be read as twain's recognition of the dubious reality of the meaning of freedom for negros even after the abolition of slavery in 1863 okay his concept of freedom is centripetal in more practical terms jim is free towards the end having been freed by his owner miss watson in her will but tom's elaborate plan to free him in style ironically prolongs his slavery and the episode can be read as twain's recognition of the dubious reality of the meaning of freedom for negros even after the abolition of slavery in 1863 okay but tom's elaborate plan to free him in style ironically prolongs his slavery and the episode can be read as twain's recognition of the dubious reality of the meaning of freedom for negros even after the abolition of slavery in 1863 twain seems to be asking can jim ever be free also can huck really escape civilization since freedom for huck and jim means different things twain seems to be interrogating the idea of freedom and slavery in the novel and he leaves the question open ended this section is necessarily brief because the points suggested above will be dealt with later and also when the characterization of huck and jim is considered but one can see how the other themes and motives are interwoven with the chip theme For instance the idea of individual liberty and social conformity is closely connected with a larger theme of freedom and slavery this theme is realized through the character of hawk who values his liberty above the demands of society a non conformist his individualism needs to be distinguished from what shulman has described as the romantic individualism of tom the anarchic individualism of his father paffin and the accusative individualism of the king and the duke and it coexist with a very sensitive social conscience moreover hawk spent some of the best moments of his life in perfect communion with jim on the raft in this respect twain is probably suggesting the possibility of individualism which is inseparable from rather than opposed to community So here it is the disgusting stars hawk however remains essentially a loner and when he finds the freedom to be and to do as he likes threatened by aunt sally's decision to adopt and civilize him he makes up his mind to light out the territory in search of non civilized freedom here twin can be seen spelling out another sub theme that of civilization versus nature what does civilization mean the novel it means conformism respectability and bookish pity and it can coexist to with acceptance of slavery witness the aristocracy or the planter class represented in the novel by the grazer ford whose pretense of civilized values depends parasitically upon the labor of hundreds of niggers nature on the other hand stands for unuttered innocence absence of hypocrisy and instinctive sympathy towards those in trouble in the opposition between the two the novel satirizes civilization and leans heavily towards nature but the dichotomy is not absolute for civilization is not always devalorized in the novel as is clear from the episode involving paffin Paffin lives in the midst of nature and denounces the education and stance of forced slavery 
another sub theme that is tangentially linked to the idea of freedom and slavery is the opposition between imagination and reality this sub theme emerges through the novel structure which is framed as it were by romantic episode at each end in sharp contrast to the reality of the middle section in the chapter 3 hawk rejects tom's bookish romanticism and is imagining as lies okay so here it is the main key point of chapter 3 you can note down in chapter 3 hawk rejects tom's bookish romanticism okay hawk rejects tom's bookish romanticism and is imagining as lies i got an old tin lamp and an iron ring and went out in the woods and rubbed and rubbed till i sweat like an engine calculating to build a palace and sell it but it wasn't no use none of the genies come so then i judged that all the stuff was only one of the tom sawyer's lies i reckoned he believed in the arabs and the elephants but as for me i think different italics added likewise hawk sees a uh, little sense in tom's over elaborate romantic plan to free zim though he falls in line with it eventually when hawk calls tom's plan of digging the foundation of jim's cabin of fullis tom persists with his romantic plan invoking the authority of the printed word it don't make no difference how fullis it is it is a right way and it's the regular way and uh, there uh, there ain't no other way that i have uh, that i ever heard of and i have read all the books that gives any information about these things they always dig out with a case knife and it takes them weeks and weeks and weeks and forever and ever tom's romantic plan stands condemned not only because it willfully imagines imagines difficulties where there are none but also because of his utter difference indifference to the torture and humiliation jim has to undergo Huckleberry Finn is a thematically rich taste and this discussion does not exhaust all the possibilities. I suggest that you work out some of the sub themes suggested above in greater details on your own. Then Twain's art of characterization. Since Huck is both a first person narrator and the central consciousness in the novel, we not only get to know every other character in the novel as they filter through his consciousness but also himself very intimately. A preliminary question to ask is how has the novelist presented his central characters in Huckleberry Finn at some stage in your study this question should turn into a general inquiry also how do novelists present these characters how for instance does Hawthorne present his characters comparison and contrast always help to bring out the similarities and differences between the author sharply and to fix them in mind The characterization of Huck before discussing Huck's character in the novel it will be helpful to go back to Tom Sawyer and see how Huck has been presented there and also to examine the sources of the character in Mark Twain's life then Huck in Tom Sawyer the juvenile pariah of the village son of the town drunkard Huckleberry was cordially hated and dreaded by all the mothers of the town because he was idle and lawless and vulgar and bad and because all their children admired him so and delighted in his forbidden society and wished they dared to be like him the romantic outcast here is the exercises what i want you to do now is to see in what way huck in huckleberry finn is similar to this description and how he is different the extra describe him as idle lawless vulgar and bad Fast in on each of these terms and see if you can use them for Huck in this novel. Huck is the first person narrator in this novel and he was not in Tom Sawyer. What effect does this new strategy have on your reactions to Huck as you assess his character? Sources in Mark Twain's life According to Diction Vector, Tom Blankenship with whom Sam had played as a boy was the prototype for Huck Finn. In Mark Twain's work, Tom was ignorant, unwashed, insufficiently fed, but he had as good a heart as ever any boy had. His liberties were totally unrestricted. He was the only really independent person, boy or man in the community. We liked him. We enjoyed this his society, and as his society was forbidden us by our parents, the prohibition trebled and quadrupled. its value and therefore we should and got more of the society than of any other boys not in 279 italics added 
the unorthodox boy however eventually ends ended up as a respectable justice of peace in remote village of montana clearly mark twain was drawing upon his childhood memories for his huck much of what we can say about huck has been anticipated in unit 2 while well, dealing with him as a narrator since huck as a central consciousness is not always aware of the full significance of his experiences the writer makes use of irony resulting from the discrepancy between the narrator's point of view and the author's point of view to convey his view of character so huckleberry finn is one of these novels that provide a balance between the character and plot okay here it is the main key point you can note down huckleberry finn is one of these novels that provides a balance between character and plot and huck is the case of developing character who changes inwardly which according to scholes and kellogg is the most important element in characterization okay so scholes and kellogg is the most important element in characterization then huck so here you can see the picture of huck in huckleberry finn it is easy to romanticize the character of huck his age he is a teenager his innocence and spontaneity that go with it his being on the fringe of society and the absence of any pretension to respectability all this coupled with his promise all this coupled with his promise to help jim escape and their river journey on a raft are good enough material for a romantic view of huck some of the positive epithets used to describe him are heroic a picaresque saint an imagist uh, an imagist poet he is also described as a prometheus a frontier thoreau a mississippi moses a tocquevillian hero okay it is therefore important for us to see huck for what he is one could start off saying that huck is something of a skeptic the skepticism coupled with his naivete helps him examine what elders say a phrase for instance he does not accept what miss watson says about providence and the efficacy of prayers tom's romantic fiction of Span- spaniards and rich arabs also leave him cold but the same boy is superstitious almost as much as jim Huck's matter of factness goes along with a decided lack of sentimentality or sentimentering as he calls it. In the week's episode he is clear sighted enough to see through the slouch and hogwash of the king's eulogy of Peter Wicks. But this does not prevent him from writing the immature drawing and the poetry of Emmeline as very good. His honesty is a most important feature of this character but he makes no fetish of it. His pragmatism is clear in his repeated lying in order to get out of tight corners and also to help others to do so. Lying in fact is part of his strategy for survival in a world which is hostile and where truth telling is risky. Survival is also what includes him Jim to borrow things like watermelons from riverside fields through Huck is aware of the thin line that separate borrowing from stealing pap always said it weren't uh, weren't no harm to borrow things if you was meaning to pay them back sometime but the widow said it wasn't anything but a soft name for stealing and no decent body would do it so here it is the picture you can see it is the borrowing watermelon and corn then Perhaps the best feature of Huck's character is his sympathy which is at once spontaneous and unsentimental for those in trouble. When he sees lights burning late at night, he is put in mind of sick fox. The sight of a supposedly drunken man in the circus who tries to ride a horse delights and the audience but makes him feel miserable. It weren't funny to me though I was all of a tremble, tremble to see his danger. When he realizes that the men trapped in the wrecked steamboat Walter Scott and doomed to die, he considers how dreadful it was, even for moderates, to be such a fix. So here it is the main key point you can note down. Is the uh, when he realizes that the men trapped in the wrecked steamboat Walter Scott was doomed to die, he considers how dreadful it was, even for moderates, to be in such a fix. 
the basic kindness takes a more active form when he cannot play act as a valet to the king any longer in the week's episode and discloses the true identity of the two frauds to marry zen but if his slave saves her and the rest of the family from the cheats he also feels deeply anguished at the tar and feathers punishment given to them i was sorry for them poor pitiful pitiful rascals it seemed to like i couldn't ever feel any hardness against them any more in the world it was a dreadful line to see human beings can be so kind to one another this is charity at its highest the paradox is that for all his dislike of civilization Hawk is deeply social being whose sense of responsibility makes him the least carefree of boys. This aspect comes out in his relationship with Jim. Hawk's moral development. Critics have referred to Huckleberry Finn and rightly as a novel of education recording the moral growth of Hawk. He has been called a lifelong learner and explorer of new territories. His moral development takes the form of his emancipation from inherited prejudices relating to slavery which is heavily dependent on his realization of Jim's essential humanity. Several decisions are crucial in this process. His first decision is made very clear very early in the novel when a runaway from civilization himself he promises not to tell on Jim. People would call me a low down abolitionist and despise me for keeping mum but that don't make no difference I ain't a going to tell and I ain't a going back there anyway this decision is spontaneous and these words are spoken casually on the spur of the moment and are not an after thought of hug the narrator and marks the beginning of this community with Jim I was ever so glad to see him. I wasn't lonesome now. It also constitutes an act of quiet defiance of the mores of the slave holding society represented on the one hand by Miss Watson who would sell her slave and on the uh, on the other by Paffin who though poor himself resents the superior education of a free negro. Hawk's decision to humble himself before Jim for playing a practical joke on him is a momentous step in his spiritual progress. It is so because it leads to another momentous decision of his to save Jim from the slave hunters. The joke consisted in making Jim believe that their separation during the fog was all a dream and it springs from a settled belief that negroes were inferior creatures and were natural objects of fun. At first Jim is taken in by Huck but later when things sink in he replies in a speech which is marked at once by righteous indignation and hot pride that Huck has tried to humiliate our friend. Huck is truly repentant. It was 15 minutes before I could work myself up to go and humble myself to a nigger. But I done and I wasn't ever sorry for it afterwards neither. I didn't do him. No more mean tricks, and I wouldn't done that one if I would a note. It would make him feel that way. Huck's decision to fool the slave hunters with a tale of smallpox and save Jim is a logical conclusion. So here is the main key point you can note down. Huck's decision to fool the slave hunters and uh, with a tale of smallpox and save Jim is a logical conclusion. But this decision is not arrived at without a battle. Between the promptings of his heart and the voice of his deformed conscience. As Hawk and Jim near Cairo, Jim anticipating his freedom gets to be jumpy and excited. Okay, But this fills Hawk with dread for it dance upon him that he is conving, conniving at the escape of a slave who is someone else's property. Conscience says to me, what had poor Miss Watson done to you? That you could see her nigger so go off right under your eyes and never say one single word. His misery increases when Jim talks of securing the release of his wife and children by stealing if necessary. Thinks I, this is what comes of my not thinking. Here was the nigger which I had a good as served to run away coming right out flat footed and saying he would steal his children, children that belonged to a man I didn't even know, a man that hadn't done me no harm. So, but eventually his human instincts proved more powerful than his belief in the sanctity of property in human place and he takes the right decision to save Jim. 
Hawks assurance to the slave hunters that he won't uh, let no runaway niggers get by me. If I can help it, points of his moral dilemma for the fact is that he can't help taking the right decision. Hawks process of re-education has well and truly begun. And one of the ghosts of the racist society and that Bedwell's Hawks companionship and Jim is exorcised. It is natural that there should be greater intimacy, even physical intimacy between the two. One return to the river from the bloody feud of the Ranger Forts and Stephersons. Hawk feels that nothing ever surrounded so good like Jim's voice and Jim he grabbed me and hugged me. He was so glad to see me. It is at this point that they feel there were not no home like a raft suggesting an idyllic non-racist community of two lazing along the river naked on a raft. The new closeness is evident in three ways. One, his appreciation of the way in which Jim keeps a Virgil in his place. Two, his recognition of the common humanity that binds them. And three, Jim's sharing of his daughter Elizabeth's story with Huck. I went to sleep and Jim didn't call me when it was my turn. He often done that. When I waked up, just at daybreak, he was sitting there with his head down, betwixt his knees, moaning and mourning to himself. He was thinking about his wife and children, away off yonder, and he was low and homesick because he hadn't ever been away from home before in his life. And I do believe he cared just as much for his people as white folks does for therein. It didn't seem natural, but I reckon it so. Huck's moral development is rather spiral than linear for his final struggle with his conscience covers much the same ground on as his preceding combat except that the problem presents itself to him in religious terms. This struggle is preceded by Huck's discovery that Jim has been sold by the king of king for 40 dirty dollars and his subsequent crime. After all this long journey and after all we would done for them scoundrels, scoundrels, here was it all come to nothing. Everything all boosted off and ruined because they could have the hati- had to serve Jim such a trick as that and make him a slave again all his life and among strangers too for 40, di- for 40 dirty dollars. Hawk's struggle with his conscience is more intense this time because the punishment for helping Jim escape is dreadful. He will go to hell. People that acts as I would been acting about the nigger goes to everlasting fire. He writes a letter to Miss Watson and feels lighter for a moment, but when he recalls his relationship with Jim and their moments of togetherness on the raft, he takes the plunge. I see Jim before me all the time, in the day and in the night time, sometimes moonlight, sometimes storms, and we are floating along, tucking and singing and laughing. But sometimes, somehow, I couldn't see, seem to strike no places to harden me against him. But only the other kind. I would see him, see him standing my watch on the top of the his in, uh, instead of his instead of calling me, so I could go on sleeping, and see him how glad he was when I come back out of the fog, and would always call me honey and pet me and do everything he could think of for me. How good he always was and at last struck the time. I saved him by telling the men we had smallpox abroad and he was so grateful and said I was the best friend old Zim ever had in the world and the only one he has got now. And then I happened to took look around and see that paper. It was a close place. I took it up and held it in my hand. I was trembling because I would got to decide forever betwixt betwixt, uh, betwixt two things and I note it. I studied a minute sort of holding my breath and then says to myself, All right then, I will go to hell and tore it up. Once again, Hawk's innate goodness has triumphed over the mores of the slave holding society he has internalized. The ending of the novel has dissatisfied many people for Huck. Here is not the Huck he has developed into. But though in this chapter he concedes the leadership to Tom. Okay. So here it is the main key point you can note down. The ending of the novel. The ending of the novel has dissatisfied, dissatisfied many people for Huck. 
here is not the hack he has developed into but though in this chapters he considers the leadership to term there is no wavering on his part on what he has set his mind to the freeing of jim when i start into still anigar i ain't no ways particular how it is done to so it's done what want is my nigger and he falls in line with tom he does so reluctantly which means his heart is in right place the characterization of jim i hope reading huckleberry finn was enabled you to form your own impression of jim because you read on i want you to do this exercise given below a list of words some of which could be applied for jim tick up those that you would think that you think could be applied to him identify at least one illustrative example for each one you choose that is caring ignorant superstitious kind loyal dignified logical generous brave okay so which word is more appropriate for zim so zim is caring okay so zim is caring kind loyal dignified logical generous and brave okay then sources in mark twain's life in his sam clements of hannibal diction vector gives the following information regarding a prototype for jim so here it is the picture you can see jim miss watson slave okay so then but the most memorable servant of the quarrels uh, the family of clens uncle john quarrels of florida missouri was middle aged uncle dan sensible honest patient the children's comrade in adventure their advisor and ally in time of trouble it was on the farm that i got my strong liking for his race wrote mark and my appreciation for certain of certain of its fine qualities victor goes on to say how uncle daniel became the acknowledged original of huck finn's friend nigger jim whose unshakable loyalty generous heart and consistently dignity even when huck makes game of his credulity raise him to the rank of mark twain's noblest creations then jim like huck jim too has been romanticized and has been presented a larger than like figure in one view both huck and jim are related to the demigods of the river to the barbarous primitivism of the negro and beyond that to archetypal archetypal primitives of the golden age instinctively good uncorrupted reason living close to nature and more influenced by its potents than by the convention of civilization another critic turns him into working myth the great residue of primitive fertile force zim has ever been praised for a, for being superstitious it is therefore important to view zim objectively for this is a helpful lead has been provided by an call who goes back to the work of some apologist first library in the south like george fizu and who describes the what these apologists have called the sembo personality in his monograph entitled history sociology and the american romans call says sociologists like george fizu had developed a theory of black personality popularly shorthand shorthanded as sembo they rejected the notion of separate species blacks were human but infantile they had their good points but it was sheer sentimentality to attribute to them mature qualities as for instance sustained purpose or durable relationship hence the non sanctity of black marriages and the supposed painless of family breakup where husbands or parents were sold one way and wives or children the other the black or sambo was essentially imp- improvident gullible irresponsible a grown up child in fees in fees lu his phrase totally dependent on parental that is to say slave masters absolute authority this long is except about the sambo personality throws in con- throws considerable light on the characterization of jim in the modern world call suggests the sambo personality would be attributed not to a defect in the genes uh, genes but to conditioning the slave master's authority over the life of the slave was absolute going beyond the authority of father over the son it included not just the authority to chest um, to chastise but the power to dispose of the slave in any manner to dictate the mode of his life his work his family and sexual power it was the exercise of this absolute power that made the victim infantile the insight should enable us to view jim's infantile behavior 
as being a result of conditioning and social heredity than an expression of his true or natural personality. To begin with, Jim is presented as Miss Watson, slave, superstitious and gullible, who is bought of Tom Sawyer's jokes. Tom hangs Jim's, uh, Jim's hat on a tree while he, Jim is asleep and Jim comes to believe that the witches put him in a trance and rode him all over the state. The story becomes increasingly dramatic with each telling with the result and that Jim becomes a sort of celebrity among the Negroes. Clearly in presenting Jim as something as a comic figure, Mark Twain has used the available stereotype of Negro. But the writer also shows that given the right opportunity, atmosphere and challenge, the same Jim emerges with a new dignity and human capacity leaving the stereotype mask behind. Jim's positive qualities begin to show up as he and Hawk meet in the Jackson's Island. This relationship is one of mutual dependence. If Hawk promises not to tell on Jim and later saves him from his captors, Jim acts as protector of Hawk, almost a surrogate father. This role begins on the island itself where his folk wisdom regarding young birds saves Hawk from the storm that he that lashes the place. Later he builds a wigwam on the raft which amounts to providing a home to Huck. During the journey he seals Huck from the ghastly sight of Pap Finn's dead body by showing great delicacy of feeling and discretion. discretion. Protective as a father, he often didn't call me when it was my turn. Chapter 23 Then the incident that happens most to establish Jim's humanity is when he deeply regrets beating his four-year-old daughter Elizabeth when she didn't shut the door without realizing that she was deep and dumb. But Jim's finest moment comes when he reacts to Huck's practical joke after the fog with great dignity charging Huck with nothing more or less than a violation of, a, of the code of friendship. At first, Jim is taken in by Huck's mischievous suggestion that there was no fog and that he had dreamed up the whole incident, but he soon recovers his humanity. In this sense, one can see him moving out of the stereotype and becoming a human being capable of dignity and emotion and loyalty. The ending of Huckleberry Finn, the last 12 chapters, chapter 13, 32 to chapter 42, concerning the rescue of Jim from captivity of the Fells farm, constitute the ending of the novel. They begin with Huck's dismay at the selling of his soulmate and his entry into the Fells farm in search of him and end with Jim's final rescue and Huck's subsequent decision to light out for the territory in search of freedom. Here you can see the picture. Here is the Huck meets Mr. Phelps. There has been great deal. Okay, so here it is the last part. There has been a great deal of disagreement about the appropriateness of the ending. Among those who have justified the ending, the Lionel Trilling and T. S. Eliot, who have done so on formal and other grounds, while Trilling considers there is a falling off in the final episode containing the elaborate game of Jim's escape, he thinks the novel has a formal aptness with Huck returning to his anonymity which he prefers. Eliot defines the ending because it is, the, it is right that the mood of the end of the book should bring us back to the end of the beginning. On the other hand, there is a widespread dissatisfaction, dissatisfaction including among the students at the way the ending betrays the novel's quest for Jim's freedom. Leo Mars falls the ending on three counts, the filmsy devices of a plot, the discordant farcical tone, the disintegration of the major characters. All of this according to Marx betray the failure of the ending. The dissatisfaction arises from the fact that the trick ending involves a certain change of heart in the slave owner Miss Watson which is unexplained and which seems to trivialize the serious issue of freedom for the slave. This has the effect of turning the enemy into a friend, the oppressor, the liberator, as A. N. Cole puts it. The farcical tone also has the effect of dissipating uh, the seriousness of the novel's business. And there is a side back. In the principal character, when Hawk accepts Tom's leadership and Jim submits himself to all the humiliation heaped upon, by, up, heaped upon him by Tom. The ending of the novel may not be well-rounded, but it is, I think, a true reflection of the state of the slave after the formal emancipation was announced in 1863. 
as is well known the emancipation did not mean the disappearance of slavery and the attitudes that went with it the emancipation was followed by a brief period of reconstruction was in turn was followed by the compromise of 1877 this last led to a reaction in the form of jim crow laws which denied hasic civil rights to the blacks it was only in 1954 when justice warren rejected segregation in schools that a near apartheid situation is a little for them if the ending of the novel is read against the background of what happened to the blacks in america it will not appear to be as arbitrary and willful as it may otherwise do mark twain published the novel over 20 years after the emancipation of 1863 but he had the precise precise of a great writer to read the signs of the time times and to look into the future the novel could be read as mark twain's satiric comment on those who wed wielded power and who willfully delayed delivering to them what they had agreed to give them as for hawk do the concedes the leadership to tom don't the best lack all conviction he is wise to reason why tom had agreed to help hawk frees him and his own police he said tom was right about old miss watson setting jim free in her will and so sure enough tom swear had gone and took all the trouble and bother to set a free nigger free and i could i could not ever understand before until the minute and the talk how he could slip help set a nigger free with his bringing up the comment constitutes very severe indictment of all the drama tom has staged in freeing jim for tom it was all self indulgence and fun so far as jim concerned he tends to get back into his sambo image but in his loyalty to the ngo tom he outshines every other character in the novel and in spite of his docility and patience he manages to retain an individuality of his own here you can see the pictures there's the aunt polly appears then let us sum up Mark Twain's engagement in Huckleberry Finn is principally with the twin theme of freedom and slavery though he interviews interweaves soft themes like imagination and reality civilization and nature individual and society with it during the course of his exploration he asks what it means to be free and also what it means to be a slave the issue is complex for freedom means different things for Huck and Jim and both freedom and slavery are projected in the novel as objectives that are not quite easy to achieve i use the phrase the twin theme of freedom and slavery in the beginning adver- advisedly because huck's freedom is heavily dependent on jim's emancipation and his moral growth is incomplete without his acceptance the humanity of the black man without reservation one source of the enduring appeal of the book lies in the huck jim relationship the controversial ending of the novel may appear to be a setback jim's quest for freedom but it will make better sense if it is seen against the historical experience of the blacks in america here it is the glossary chattel slavery a chattel is a movable possession any possession or piece of property other than real estate so chattel slavery is a system where the slave belongs to his or her owner then stereotype a person or thing that conforms to an unjustifiable fixed usually standardized mental picture also a printing plate cast from a mold of compost type bulls queue a mock serious comic imitation especially in parody of dramatic or literary work bulls queue then reconstruction reconstruction acts passed by the us congress required the giving of the votes to blacks then jim crow laws laws passed by the southern states of the us laying down the policy of segregating and discriminating against blacks then originated from the refrain jump jim crow of a plantation song here it is the assignment discuss the twin theme of freedom and slavery in huckleberry finn describe in some detail how hawk wrestled with his concise and learning that jim had been sold to phelps plantation and bring out its distinctive character in the bulls queue closing chapter jump jim who whom the readers have come to love and admire becomes a cartoon figure and the victim of meaningless tortures do you agree give a reason answer what reasons can you suggest twain may have had for the pro- protracted terminal chapters then father's reading clement samuel langhorn adventures of huckleberry finn in james thomas then carl 
Prafula C. Ed. Mark Twain, an anthology of recent criticism. Call A. N. Mark Twain's Ackle Ac 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 History, Sociology, and the American Romance. Then Max Leo, Mr. Elliot, Mr. Trilling, and Huckleberry Finn. Then Miller, Robert Keith, Mark Twain, New York. Then Twain, Mark, The Adventures of Huckleberry Finn. Here is the all suggested reading. Okay. So thank you, viewer. So keep watching the video till the end. Please like, share, and subscribe. Study with Master Notes and push the bell icon to get the earliest notification of this new videos of the new chapters. So thank you. Thank you, viewers.